OK, this is part two of the Urban Geography Map Skills questions tutorials. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to deal with uh, the second most common exam question. Um, if you've watched the first tutorial, you will be taught how to identify the different urban zones from the CBD, inner city, suburbs. And uh, in this second question, which comes up most years, you're asked to consider a development and why it's appropriate for the edge of the city. Now, sometimes they might identify an area of land in, towards the center of the city, but the key is uh, looking around the area being asked to develop and consider why um, this development would suit. Now, in this question, which is very common, they wanted to build a, a new supermarket and it's on the edge of the city. We can see this from this little diagram here. Um, it's in area Z and we're being asked to give the advantages and disadvantages of this particular site. And we're being asked to give map evidence. So we must be giving grid references or referring to things on the maps in our answer. Now, this question is fairly common. It's asked in lots of different uh, contexts. Uh, you might have something that's already been built um, and they're asking why it was built there. Why would it suit? Uh, and, or it might be in this, like in this question, that it's something that might be built. Now, if you open up the 200, 2018 um, past paper, if you go to the front page of this website and find that particular past paper, open it up and scroll down to question nine, you'll see this question. And then what I suggest we'll do, what we'll do is we'll actually have a look at this particular map and I'll use it to give you some of the main ideas that, that you would use regardless of the development and regardless of the map you get given because they're normally the same ideas. So if we scroll to the end, uh, there, you will find two maps here because there are two in a geography exam. And the first one is for the physical geography questions. But if we scroll further, we'll find the second one, which uh, we will find is a map of Oxford. Now, area Z that we were being asked about is this area up here. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. And then just scroll a little bit across. There we go. So we are being asked to consider why a new supermarket would be suited to this particular location in, on, on the edge of Oxford. So the first thing that you're going to probably look for is what's the land like? Well, there's a, a lack of contours, so the land is re reasonably flat. Uh, and if, if the land is flat, then you're going to say this will make it cheap to develop because they won't need to flatten it. If the land was quite steep, like we can see in this grid square, then you would say the opposite. That would be a disadvantage that there'd be a lot need to, needing to be invested in flattening it. Second thing you want to consider is, is it next to a main road? Well, in this case, yes, it's next to the A40. So that's your map evidence. You can then therefore say that this means transporting goods in and out will be easy. Or if the development involves people like a supermarket, then you would be wanting to say it's, it's ideal because it means people can get there quickly. Third thing is you're going to want to see whether there is some kind of river nearby. Um, now, if there is, in this case, um, that is a problem because that actually presents a flood risk. If there was to be heavy rain, these river streams may flood, uh, which might affect the development. If there isn't a river on the site, then that is a positive an advantage. And you'll say because, because there's no river nearby, then there's a limited flood risk, uh, which is a positive. OK, the fourth thing you're going to want to think about is, is there housing nearby? Now, we can see lots of suburban housing in the area. Um, he, and you'd, you'd give a good reference for one area of suburban housing. This means there's lots of people living in that area. Now, this depends on your development. But in this case, because it's a supermarket, that's an advantage because people will be able to shop nearby and would use the supermarket. If it was a business park, it would be a little bit different. These would be potential workers who could easily, therefore, commute to this place to work. OK. <laughs> Now, beyond those sort of typical points, there are some more general advantages uh, that you want to refer to, that any development on the edge of the city is going to benefit from having lots of land it can develop into. So, for example, you could pick this grid square here and say it's got no developments on it really yet. And therefore, if this site was successful, it could expand into that, providing lots of land. Other things that you want to consider is if the site is near the edge of the city compared to maybe in the city centre like down here, then that's an advantage because the land will be cheaper because land is generally cheaper on the edge of the city. Furthermore, if the site is, by the way, if it was in the city center, then you'd say the land was more expensive and that'd be a disadvantage. 
Um, if it's near the edge, then you can say it's going to have a nice environment. Uh, we've got an area of forestry here, for example, with a nature reserve symbol, which means that people are more likely to want to come and work here and potentially shop here because of the nicer environment. Other things you can pick up by just looking around the map might give you things that you want to talk about. So we have a college here. Uh, that might be an advantage because it will provide skilled workers for the supermarket, maybe managers doing management courses at the college could work in the supermarket. If it was a business park development, then you could you could use it to say this for the same point. There is a park and ride nearby, which means people can easily get to it. Um, and buses, they could park here and buses could run them to the development. It largely depends on what your development is. Um, and that, that picks up pretty much the same points that any map is going to give you. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the map is. Certain maps will have other things around them, maybe an airport or a golf course or particular developments that you can identify and then link to the development. And by the way, it, you can look around the map. You don't need to stick within one grid square. Generally, there's a rule of thumb. Anything that lies within a kilometer, so within this greater area that I'm highlighting here, would be highly relevant to understanding why the site you're thinking about is, is good or bad. Remember, you are having to think about disadvantages in this specific exam question. Okay, what I suggest you do is have a look at some of the other past paper questions. So if we look at the 2017, we've got a very similar question, which is they're planning to build a new housing development in an area of Edinburgh. So if you scroll to the end of this exam, you will be able to practice that question by looking at grid square 2667. And think about five reasons why the, the area might be suited for housing. But it does say explain why this area is suitable. It would be fair to give a, a negative reason. You don't want to give too many, but one negative reason out of your five, because there's five marks, would be also fine. If we have a little look at 2016, um, at the question here, this is a little bit different. We don't have a development question in, particularly here. So uh, we'll skip this question. If we then, if you open up the 2015 paper, you can see that it's a Birmingham Airport, a golf course and business park and a housing area found in area X. So that's this area between 16 and 20 and 81 and 86. Um, using map, I'm going to explain why such developments are found there. Now, when you do scroll down to the end of this, if you want to have a look at this exam paper question and scroll down to the end, uh, you'll see that this is once again on the edge of Birmingham. And therefore, lots of the things I talked about in my Oxford example at the start of this tutorial uh, are relevant to answering this. But what I would suggest is you have a look at each of these in turn and practice the, each one, making sure you can always pick out five or six areas and always give six figure good references or refer to something on the map when you're answering this question.